Today's video, we are going to focus on uh, carbons. So this is the third uh, video uh, in terms of nonmetals. How the first one where we looked at uh, uh, ammonia, the second one, nitric acid, now we are looking at carbon. So now, in looking at this third part or carbon, we are going to answer the question. And here is the question that we are going to answer. The diagram below shows two forms of carbon, that is P and Q. And as you know, carbon can exist in two forms, okay? Can exist in two forms, as we are going to uh, discuss. So now, the question is that, name the allotrope labeled uh, P and Q. In short, name the two forms of carbon that is labeled P and Q. So when you see a, such a structure, one form of carbon, this is called the diamond. So this one is the diamond. And of course, the other one is the graphite. So carbon can exist as the diamond and also uh, graphite. So all these bonds that you are seeing here, these parts, these are carbons. These are carbons attached. Okay, these are carbons attached. Okay, so this is diamond. And of course, the other one is the uh, carbon. Explain the meaning of the term allotropes explain the meaning of the term allotropes. Now, since we said the carbon can exist in two forms, look at this, exist in two forms, but different structures. That is what we call allotropes. So now, in writing, how can we uh, write this one? So, we can say allotropes are molecules, okay, are molecules, that consists of atoms of one element. So I can say, uh, let me say, allotropes are molecules that consist of atoms of the same element, okay, but have different, but have different structure, different structure and geometric, I'm going to fill in this part, I'll rub it afterward, geometric shapes. Okay, so allotropes are molecules that consist of atoms of uh, the same element but have different uh, structure and geometric shapes and this is what we call allotropes. So that is how you define it, or that is how you define allotropes, or that is how you explain the term allotropes. Now the other question is that what kind of bonds, so we are on question C, what type of bonds or bonding is represented by these forms of carbon? Now, carbon, you know that it's a non-metal. You know that it's a non-metal. Like I said, you only have carbons in these, uh, in these uh, compounds that you are able to see, or in these uh, uh, forms of carbon. You only have carbon. All these are carbon attached to each other. So now, if it's between non-metal and non-metal, you know that it's covalent bonding, and therefore the bond here is called covalent. Covalent what? Covalent. Bond. So the bonding that exists between the two, uh, or between, are uh, represented by the forms of carbon is called covalent uh, bond. Which allotrope named in A, so here, of these allotropes that we've named, has the physical property which is typical of one metals? So one that is typical of metals, the example, or I mean uh, the allotrope is uh, graphite. Okay, graphite. And now what is the physical property of a typical metal? What is the uh, property of a typical metal? What is the uh, physical property which a typical of a typical metal? So it conduct heat and what? And electricity. Okay, so that is about graphite. Why does it conduct heat and electricity? If you look at the way graphite is, you know, carbon is bonded to 
it forms four bonds. But you are going to find that each carbon in graphite is just bonded to what? To three. So there is a delocalized electron. Delocalized electron. Delocalized uh, electron. And this one transfer charge. And as a result, it uh, conducts electricity. So that is basically the reason why it conducts electricity. Okay? So that is all about this part. And that is the question that is here. Okay. Let us try now to answer the other question just on this uh, topic. So the other question that we expect is this one. This one also came in a particular year. Carbon is asymmetrical and exists in two forms of allotropes. What is an allotrope? So this one, we've already defined what an allotrope is previously. So we'll spare this question. But what you write is what already I have looked at, which is allotropes are molecules that consist of what? Atoms of, uh, or, uh, of the same element, but having different um, structure and um, geometric shapes. Then now, two crystalline allotropes of carbon. So here also you have graphite and what? And diamond. Diamond. Then give one property and the use based on the property of the allotropes you have named above. Okay? So, what is the property of graphite? Let us start with graphite. So, one of the property of graphite it is that it is what? Uh, it is slippery. It is slippery. And as a result, it is used as what? So, slippery, as a result, it is used as the, used as rubricant. Rubricant. Then, of course, if you look at diamond, it is hard. Okay, it is the hardest element ever known. So, it is hard. Now, what is the property, or what is the use of this? Used in what? Making boring tools, boring or welding uh, tools, okay? So because of that property, it is used in making of what? It is used in making of who? Cutting, let me put cutting and drilling tools, okay? So that is one thing you should know, or cutting tools. Okay, so what is the other thing that we uh, need to know about this uh, topic? Maybe before we summarize, or this part on carbon, what is the other thing that you need to know? So the other thing that you need to know, you need to know the properties of these uh, properties of diamond, properties of carbon. Let us maybe look at the properties of diamond. What are the properties of diamond? So the physical properties of diamond that is, is very hard, and of course, like I said, it's the hardest element uh, ever known. So it's very hard. It is colorless and transparent with dazzling, brilliant uh, rasture. Okay? Then, it does not conduct electricity, and this is because there are no ions or free electrons to carry out charge. So those are the properties of diamond. And of course the uses, we've just looked at the uses of diamond, of which you said diamond is used in making cutting tools and drilling tools because it's very hard, and it's also used in making cutting tools. Then what about graphite? What about graphite? So the physical properties of graphite is that it conducts electricity and of course heat. And this is because of the free moving electron in between the layers of carbon atoms, okay? Then, of course, it is soft and slippery, and in this case, it is used in making of what? Rubricant. The uh, parts or the bonds between carbon are able to slide past each other. In short, we are saying it forms the sheet of atoms that can slide past each other. For example, I mean this uh, top part and this top part, they can slide past each other as a result making it uh, suitable to use uh, or, or to be used in making of a uh, rubricant. Okay, so it is also used in making what? Pencils. 
okay, because it writes well on the paper. So those are some of the things that you need to know. So please uh, see you in the next one where we are going to continue discussing other, or we are going to continue answering a question on other nanometers. So the next one we are going to look at carbon, I mean carbon dioxide. Then we can look at some more. Otherwise this is where we end today and see you in the next one.